in this video, I'm going to be telling you about two shoes that I'm really glad I purchased. What is up, everybody, and welcome to 40 Runs. And how are we all doing, people? You know the drill. Let me know. In the comments, and have you listened to the Long Run Podcast? No? Why not? It's the biggest running podcast in the world. I may be making it up, but check out the link in the description. It's, all, it's on all your platforms, uh, your podcast platforms, so check that out. Right, so I wanted to make this video because I was sitting there thinking to myself the other day, aren't I a lucky boy? Now, what's he going on about? Well, I am a lucky boy because we get sent a lot of shoes to this channel. We get sent a lot of gear, actually, and we turn down a lot of stuff, some really random stuff we get um, offered. And we also get offered doubles of stuff. Like the other day, I got offered the same pair of Aftershocks or Shocks, um, headphones. I got offered them again to review. It's like people don't watch the channel. Anyway, um, but what I have noticed, and straight up clarity is always, transparency on the channel, is that some brands um, are sort of <laughs> hmm, stepping away from the channel a little bit. Um, I've noticed that uh, one or two of the brands that we used to get stuff from are not sending us uh, as much stuff or any stuff anymore. And I do think that's a lot down to the fact that I may have been too honest. Right, so hopefully by now you know the drill that we get uh, sent stuff um, to be reviewed, right? They don't ask for us to review, but we get dropped the stuff because they know we're going to review it. Um, and ideally we say nice things, I'm guessing, although we don't get told what to say. Um, we don't get told, uh, we're not briefed on what to say. Uh, but that said, um, they do expect certain content that is produced, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, right? Um, but I have noticed that one or two of the brands that I have spoke openly about, whether it's the build quality, whether it's um, the cost of the shoes, uh, or I've just said that, you know I me, mean, that basically it's boring. I have noticed that some of those brands uh, have yeah, slowed down in terms of sending, sending stuff or stop sending stuff at all, which is fine. I, I'm, a, I'm a big boy, I don't, I don't really mind. I actually, i tell you who I really respect out there at the moment uh, and have done for a while is Ben Parks. Ben Parks, uh, I saw an interview with him actually and it re-emphasised exactly what um, we know about Ben. He said there's no amount of money that he would take for a sponsorship deal. Now don't forget, Ben is a 235 marathon runner, but there's not an amount, uh, amount of money that he would take for sponsorship that he buys all his own shoes, he buys all the stuff that he reviews. He refuses... Um, to be, you know, gifted stuff and things like that because he wants to be 100% impartial. And, a guy, I mean, the guy's doing incredibly well on YouTube, so I take my hat off to him. Um, it is tempting when you start out on YouTube to uh, sort of embrace all the free stuff. Um, whether you lose some integrity, I don't know, because uh, I'm just as guilty as anybody. I mean, we take stuff all the time here on 40 Rounds because at the end of the day, we're looking to make content that you guys enjoy, you guys uh, search for. Um, and yeah, and that, that basically, the and if you didn't know, the ad revenue, which is not a large amount of money on this channel, um, we re they use that money to reinvest into the shoes and into the stuff that we aren't sent. And that's why I've gone all around the houses, but that's what I wanted to get onto because there are a couple of shoes this year that I wanted to talk about that I've actually purchased myself out of my own money. And I think they're worth highlighting because they've been absolute belters. So, like I said, um, we use the ad money to reinvest that into the channel, which is why we have so many shoes on the channel. Uh, whether that's right or wrong, I it's up to you whether you do that or not. But yeah, we take the um, little bit of ad money that we do get from this channel and we reinvest that into running shoes and we purchase them and that's how it all works. So if you think, yeah, how come, how come he's got some issues? Sometimes it is because we're sent the shoes. Sometimes it's because I've gone out and bought them. So hopefully by now, you're now up to speed. Um, so the two shoes that I wanted to talk about today are the Hoka Texton X and the Reebok Energy Float Ride X. Right, so I'm very conscious on this channel of, of price of goods. Now, again, I know it's pot kettle because we do get sent a lot and you can say, oh, I was getting it for free, so price relation. But I am appreciative of how much stuff costs, especially right now with the cost of living crisis. Um, but I wanted to talk about these two shoes because they're uh, sort of but different ends of the spectrum in terms of cost, but I think they offer two different value points. Now, for me, trail shoes, I don't buy many trail shoes. I buy a Pegasus Trail every year, job done, because I live in them for, tra for trails, but mainly for coaching and doing odds and sods. And then I always get myself a new pair of trail shoes, especially this year, because we're going up Ben Nevis, uh, which is a mountain here in the UK. Um, 
Last year I had the Trabuco Maxim ASICs, uh, but this year I was looking at the Tectin X because of the carbon plate element of it. Now here is the shoe. Now I have done a video on this shoe. I might have done two videos on this shoe, um, so check those out. But this shoe, the reason I uh, picked it is because it cost me a lot of money. It was £170. Uh, again, I purchased this out of my own money. Now that's a lot of money for me to to pay on a pair of shoes. Uh, I usually spend the bulk of the money on like the Alpha Fly when that comes out or the Alpha Fly 2, but I wanted to spend the £170 because I really wanted a carbon plated trail shoe. So this shoe has got a twin uh, plate in it, it works like suspension, it goes down the, the front, of the runs down that way like a, a normal carbon plate, but it's it's got two of them and they move around, so as you're going over the different terrain, they move with you, instead of just being a rigid plate through the shoe. You've got the ProFly, I think it's the ProFly Plus, can never remember, I think it is, you've got the two layers of it, uh, material you've got the Profly here, Profly Plus, then you've just got the rubberized EVA um, on the bottom. You've got a um, uh, mesh upper, jacquard mesh upper, you've got a gusseted tongue, you've got a little bit of uh, um, foam coverage around the heel, and then you've got the I would say lightweight lugs, uh, they're, they're there but they're not over intrusive, they're not like in like a traditional trail shoe in terms of depth of lugs, uh, but they do offer enough traction for me and the stuff that I do in it. Yeah, I just checked, dual density ProFly X midsole. I wasn't going completely barking mad. Now, for me, this shoe, at the moment, <laughs> might get another one, but at the moment, is hands down my best trail shoe and probably the best trail shoe I've run in. It's fast, I just feel awesome in it. I can do multiple terrains in it, uh, especially around here where I live, uh, with the sort of uh, towpaths, the woods, um, the grass sections that I do pick up, especially up the fields up the back. It just rips up everything that I need and it just flies along and that's why I wanted to highlight it to you as, as one of the best shoes that I've bought this year out of my own money because it just feels, it, it just makes me feel awesome and, that, and I say it again and again and again on this channel, I, I want shoes to make me feel great when I'm out there running, to, to help my mental state of mind that make me perform better. That, I think there's a lot to that. Uh, and this shoe for me just makes me feel alive when I'm running it on the trails. When you're bobbing and weaving, you're ducking and diving, you're going through, you know, roots into grass, you know, on, onto the trails, um, onto the, the towpaths and back in again, and you're just all over the place. It's so much fun. You're literally flying along in this shoe. So for me, this is, is this one of the best shoes that I purchased. I say it, was, it, was a, it was a hard decision to make whether to invest £170 in the shoe because I knew, uh, being totally transparent with you, I knew the shoe is, is not something that's going to gain views for me. People don't really care if I'm in a, what I say about a trail shoe. It, this was more of a personal thing. I wanted a really good shoe to take me up Ben Nevis uh, in September. And this really, really is a fantastic trail shoe for me. And the other shoe is this, the Reebok Float Ride Energy X, carbon plated shoe from Reebok. And it's the other end of the spectrum in terms of price. Now this is 130 pounds on the Reebok website, but I got a code and I got it for well under that. I think I got it for under 100 pounds in the end. Now this is just a great shoe, people. It reminds me so much of the Endorphin Speed uh, in terms of fun and usability. It has some drawbacks, mainly the fact it doesn't come in half sizes, uh, and also it was limited in terms of um, being able to get hold of the shoe, but I think it's a little bit more readily available. A little bit about the shoe, we've got a Piba-based uh, midsole, um, which is nice and light. We've got rubber outside. I think it's got a five mil drop, I might be wrong. Uh, no, six mil drop, and it's a, so it's 130 pounds if you get it on the UK website. We've got a very, very breathable mesh upper on the shoe. It fits true to size-ish. I went down to a nine. Um, I'm very funny with Reebok, if you've not seen any of the uh, shoe reviews we've done, I'm actually about a 9.25 in Reebok, but the nine for me in this shoe is absolutely fine. So true to size, ish if you're going to do anything go down uh lacing's great we've got a gusseted tongue it comes in from about there and the whole midfoot lockdown is just great now this shoe for me has just been fun uh, and it's like a daily trainer although it's got a carbon plate in the forefoot it's a daily trainer that i use on the sort of up tempo work that i'm doing if i'm just going out there and getting four or five miles whatever i need to do on the plan on that day maybe i'm double running so the the session in the morning is going to be a bit quicker than the one in the evening i'm sticking on these if i'm coaching and i'm doing a faster session in the coach session we're going here i say it's just a great alternative to have 
in my rotation. And for the money, I'm not sure you could have got a better shoe this year. So that's it guys, they're the two shoes that I'm glad I really spent my own money on this year. Uh, I say this is a funny video, I appreciate, but I want to know in the comments, is there a shoe this year that you really are glad that you bought, that you parted with your money and you think actually, that's an absolute belter, or is there a shoe, right, <laughs> that you've bought, like I did with the A6 uh, Gel Nimbus Lite 3, that was an absolute shocker. It was alright, but I still can't get over 165 quid. I just can't. I just can't work that out. So let me know in the comments is there a shoe like that as well. But there we go. Yeah, funny video, different video, but like always on 40 runs, total transparency, trying to be a little bit different, change the conversation, um, but still talking about awesome running shoes.